Well, my dad was an army officer. He took his first family out to India in the time of the Raj. Lived a very uh, luxurious life over there at that time, you know. Came home, met my mother and went into the hotel business. And that's, uh, that's what it was. So that's my daddy with um, the Polish Prime Minister escorting him round the, the line-up, you know. I'm, I'm very proud of that, you know. And he never got rid of his army character. Mm. It wouldn't be, please, will you shut the door? It would be, door! Bull in Tangevni in Anglesey. That was a great place. Big listed building, 20 bedrooms, I think. I, I went to school there, Penrath School, up the hill. That's, that's Welsh for up the hill. We had characters in the staff. Oh, Maggie was, Maggie must have been 90, pushing on 100. She was Welsh, very Welsh. She used to wear a black dress and a white pinny. She used to sit and clean the silver and do little odd jobs. And when we went on holiday to the seaside, <laughs> my mother insisted that she come on holiday with us. So that was Maggie and Johnny Bach was the handyman. I used to dream that the, there was this witch crouched down and that they'd come to life and they would chase me down the stairs. And you know how you get in a dream where you're running and your legs aren't moving. That wasn't a hotel, it was a pub. Right on the seafront, it had a balcony on the, the shore side, facing the shore, almost like the Royals balcony, you know, with great big uh, French doors opening out onto the balcony, covered in pigeons. They used to get in sometimes, you know. <laughs> Seven bars, including a ballroom with a stage and entertainment. I'd be up there on the, on the stage, on the piano, <laughs> inviting <laughs> mum and dad to a concert. <laughs> yeah, I loved it there. But I didn't have any friends there. I went, you know, uh, junior school. I don't remember any friends. I suppose I had enough to do at home. <laughs> Singing and dancing. I would say seven bars, various sorts of bars, you know, a public bar, a cocktail bar with a cocktail barman. He stole all the takings one day and did a runner, disappeared. We had all the police around. Oh, Sam did know. Oh, yes, up in, up in the Great Orm, Happy Valley. Down at the bottom, there's a, there was a stage there, and there was entertainment every summer season. I used to go, and I'd sit on the bank. I wouldn't uh, pay to go in and, and have a seat, but lots of people did. They, you could sit on the bank and watch um, the talent competitions. Oh, they were great. They were really funny sometimes, you know. Children's ones on a Saturday, but the grown-ups ones. You know, you'd get the big men going up and singing Welsh songs. I was quite young to walk all that way as well on my own, you know, and I'd go and sit uh, and watch them, but uh, quite starstruck, you know. Oh, roller skating. Did I mention the roller skating rink next to the Washington, right next door? Spent all my pocket money there. Oh, and I posed. Oh, my favourite place. 20 bedrooms, local characters as staff, directly opposite Bangor Pier. Beautiful gardens, terraced gardens, great for playing in. I had friends there. There was two twins and their cousin Lynn, who used to sing in her best voice for us. <laughs> and uh, Graham, and we played in the gardens. You know, in the bushes and up the trees, it was great. And um, we had a favourite uh, play spot. Got there one day, and there was somebody skinny dipping <laughs> in the water. And he'd left his clothes all folded. And when he wasn't looking, we grabbed his clothes and did a runner. It was awful naughty, wasn't it? I don't know where the hell we put his clothes. I don't, don't remember. But I led it home to the gazelle. <laughs> Out of breath, my face was red. The cook was looking at me, you know, what have you been up to now? I'll tell, tell your dad I heard you swearing in the garden. 
<laughs> Put the chair away. <laughs> anyway, how he got home, I don't know. <laughs> Whether he walked naked, <laughs> picked up by the police, but I had nightmares for, for a week. Tried to sleep with my mother once. <laughs> it was so bad. I thought he was going to come and get me. <laughs> it was called, we called him Winkle because he used to go around beaches picking winkles. Lots and lots of yachts everywhere. The cannons went off on our jetty. It was a stone jetty, you know. There were two Jaguars in the garage, vintage ones. Yeah, and my dad didn't drive, so for the barman used to take me to school sometimes. <laughs> if I deliberately missed the bus, I would get escorted to school, <laughs> chauffeur driven, <laughs> in a Jaguar. It was threatened to go across um, in the ferry. It went across to Bangor Pier and then to the Gazelle and then all the way up to Beaumaris. And uh, there was a rather nice young man. Oh, I was there all the time <laughs> with my pocket money. Oh, I was madly in love with him. <laughs> Blonde, you know, bro bronzed, stripped off. <laughs> I don't think he even noticed me when I was older there. <laughs> oh, I would go back there tomorrow. I loved it there. And my dad broke his heart when he had to leave there. I had a boat when I lived in Bangor, in Bangor on Dee. I'd be about second year in a secondary school. Yeah, a wooden boat. A boyfriend gave it to me. He was going into the Merchant Navy. I said I might as well have it. I could look after it for him while he was gone and I could use it if I wanted to in the cemetery. I used to stream down the River Dee on a Sunday afternoon on my own, singing my heart out. Yeah, it did flood. My mum was terrified because she couldn't swim. She stayed upstairs, you know. Yes, it was very bad flooding. The pub itself was completely flooded. You, you, you just couldn't walk in it. You had to stay upstairs until the fire brigade came. Oh, I don't know. The, the cellar was full as well. <laughs> Beer barrels, you know, <laughs> floating about <laughs> off the gantry. I would <laughs> sail down the street and pick up anybody who was stuck on the doorstep and take them to safety. I can remember one old man who was hilarious. He was terrified got him in the boat and took him to dry land. That was quite good fun, really. Left an awful mess. Left a, a, a tide mark all the way around every room and mud on the floor. And frightening, too, when you look through the windows. It was all fields and they were all underwater, you know. I've had quite an experience, haven't I? Nothing boring about it, my. I'm old now. <laughs> Boring. <laughs> no, it's it's fine. I wish I had a car, actually. I think I'd do a lot more if I did. Still an old Astra in the garage. Glyn said leave it there and it'll be antique one day. Well, I won't be here when it's antique. <laughs> He's got his head in the clouds. I've been watching the squirrels chasing each other amongst these trees here and these out in the front. And they go across to Brenda's across the road and then they come back at five o'clock. They go off for the day to Brenda's <laughs> <laughs> and then they come back and, uh, oh gosh, I've got loads of squirrels. Do you know, I've had a damn good life, haven't I? Yeah. I'm not doing so badly now. <laughs>